Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing um, bradykinin-induced vasodilatation. Okay, so we've just discussed the process by which you produce nitric oxide. Now in this video I want to discuss a little bit more about that nitric oxide synthesis process. Okay, so firstly I want to discuss the involvement of heat shock protein, or 90, with the ENOS enzyme. And secondly, I also want to discuss the supply of the substrate for uh, this nitric oxide synthase uh, enzyme, which is L-arginine. So firstly, let's just begin with heat shock protein 90. So, basically, when calcium calmodulin uh, complexes activate the nitric oxide synthase enzyme and it starts, uh, well, the nitric oxide synthase free enzyme and it starts producing nitric oxide. There also seems to be another protein that is important in actually leading to the activation of this enzyme, and that seems to be heat shock protein 90. Which, where shall I draw this? Um, okay, I will draw it down here basically. So let's say this is our ENOS here. In fact, I'll draw it on the other page. This is just a mess here. Okay, so uh, let's say this is our ENOS here, which has now had calcium calmodulin bind to it, and it's about to start producing nitric oxide, sim nitric oxide in the way that I've previously described. Okay, what appears to happen is that it associates with another protein known as heat shock protein 90, and this protein seems to be quite important, basically, in uh, actually activating the enzyme and allowing it to function. So this is heat shock protein 90 here. Okay, so let's highlight this in blue. Okay, now what's the evidence for heat shock protein 90 being important in ENOS function? Well, basically, if you use a drug uh, which inhibits heat shock protein 90, uh, the name of which is galdanamycin, galdanamycin, okay, so galdanamycin is a drug which will bind to and inhibit the heat shock protein 90 and stop it from being able to bind to the ENOS. And basically, if you st if you use this drug on endothelial cells, galdanamycin, uh, it will stop nitric oxide production, basically. And that's why we believe it's important in associating with ENOS and then uh, allowing ENOS to perform its function. So it seems to play some important role in the activation of ENOS. Okay, so that's all I've got to say about heat shock uh, protein 90. Oh, in fact, I should probably write out its name in full. So HSP means heat shock protein 90. Okay, so HSP 90, heat shock protein 90. Okay, right. Uh, finally, I just want to discuss this, the supply of substrate for our ENOS enzyme, which is L-arginine. Okay, so basically, uh, what we know is that uh, L-arginine is pumped, well, it's transported across the membrane of the cell. So let's say this is our cell here. Basically, L-arginine gets into the cell through a transporter known as the Y-plus transporter, or the CAT1 transporter. Um, okay, so this transporter is the CAT1. Uh, one transporter, and sorry, that should be in capital letters, C-A-T-1, or you might also hear it referred to as the Y-plus transporter, so the CAT1 or the Y-plus transporter, and I'll just bring this more into the middle, transporter, okay, I'm going awfully wrong here, uh, let me write out its name again down here, CAT1 slash Y-plus transporter. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's going to transport L-arginine into the uh, membrane of the, into the cytoplasm of the cell. So this is what's going to provide the substrate for the nitric oxide synthase enzyme. Okay, and um, it's dependent upon the electrical potential difference across the membrane. It will not operate if you depolarize the membrane enough. It needs the electrical potential difference to be around negative 70 millivolts in order for it to work. Uh, because the way it's going to work is it's transporting cationic uh, amino acids into the cell. L-arginine is a cationic amino acid. Let me explain why. Uh, it's because this guanadino nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons here, 
which can associate with a proton basically here. And that proton will have a positive charge. So you often end up with this um, end of L-arginine having a positive charge. So L-arginine is often a positively charged amino acid. Uh, and therefore this transporter, the cat one slash Y plus transporter, uh, uses the electrical potential difference across the membrane where usually the um, intracellular compartment has a lower electrical potential than the extracellular compartment, lower by usually around 70 millivolts. It uses that to transport this cationic amino acid into uh, the cytoplasm. Okay, now another important thing that I want to just discuss is that you can regenerate L-arginine from L-citrullines. You can turn L-citrulline back into L-arginine, and the enzyme which does this has a rather fantastic name, which I'll write down here, which is argino, arginine, arginino, argininosuccinate synthetase, arginino, argininosuccinate synthetase. Argino, arginino, I struggle with the name of this enzyme, arginino-succinate synthetase, okay. Right, so this enzyme, arginino-succinate synthetase, is capable of turning L-citrulline back into L-arginine. So that is my discussion of uh, the supply of the substrate now complete. So we bring L-arginine in from the extracellular space through this CAT1 uh, or Y-plus transporter. We also regenerate the um, end product uh, well, sorry, we regenerate the substrate from the end product, L-citronine, using this enzyme, arginino-succinate synthetase. Okay, right. So, in the next video, what we'll discuss is how nitric oxide is going to diffuse from the endothelial cells to the surrounding smooth muscle cells, and how it's going to cause uh, relaxation of those surrounding muscle cells.